you, you said a lot <laughs> and it makes me, I wanted to ask you about what can we do to protect ourselves and I'm listening to you and just thinking, oh my goodness, do I, I need to drink more turmeric? Oh, I have to take aspirin. I have like, what do you think that we can do we, like to maybe prepare our bodies if we do catch it or, and do you we see can. this really, I like the way, since it's airborne, it's really scary, but should we wear our mask? Should we wear gloves? Should we have the antibiotics? Should we really be that scared or that like, um, I myself have gone out without a mask, you know, and I feel like really is this serious, you know? But listening to you now, I really feel like it's really serious. Well, it's very serious. And, that, and as far as also the fact that Latinos and African Americans are the ones who are catching it even more, and I'm both, <laughs> you know? So just, of, you're saying wear the mask. Yeah, so there's a lot of, um conflicting information. First, you're supposed to wear a mask, then you're not, then you are, then you aren't, right? So our policy and my personal common sense tells me that if I'm wearing a mask, I'm going to be protecting part of, of okay, so understand this, the virus is airborne. Yes. But it's also contact so when someone coughs or sneezes or touches their face and then they touch another surface or when they cough and sneeze and that sprays everywhere, it's going to land on surfaces and it lives on your clothing, it lives on tables, it lives on anything that it can attach itself to. So not only is it airborne, i.e. wearing a mask will protect you if someone around you is sneezing or coughing on you, right? But you also have to think, and, and this is where people are making their biggest mistakes. They're going out to the grocery. Grocery stores are probably the one of the worst places you can be because people are going in, some people are wearing masks, some are not, but they're touching things and they're not thinking so here's the problem when people are going in and they're wearing their gloves and they've got their mask on and they think they're protected the problem is you have to understand how not to cross contaminate so once you've if you've touched something on the shelf you've got your gloves on you've got your mask on and you're, you touch something on the shelf. And now, okay, you've just made contact potentially with the surface where that virus is living. You picked up a can of beans to read the label. You don't want it, you put it back. Now you have potentially become contaminated. So what are people doing? They're digging in their purse with their glove on, they're digging, they take, they're talking on the phone, they're, they're handing out money. So you have now cross-contaminated everything on you, in your purse, then you're going to get into the car. So taking the glove, and, and a lot of people don't understand how to take the gloves off. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest problem. So in answer to your question, what can we do to prevent it? Stay home stay home touch don't touch your face wash your hands keep your hands away from your face um, limit exposure to other people uh, especially in large groups because this virus spreads like wildfire um, people are sick and they don't know it i've had patients who are beyond three months still testing positive with this virus. Three months, they're feeling better, they think they're better, they come in, we test them, they still have the virus. And that's the other deadly thing about this virus is that it, I've had, I, I screened two patients last week, it was a husband and wife. The wife wound up with pneumonia, she had 
she, they sent her home to heal at home. They didn't keep her in the hospital. Um, the husband also had it. He had it for 10 days and he wound up, the, he was retested after 10 days. He didn't have the virus anymore. He was cleared. The only symptoms he had was a slight cough. Never had the sore throat, never had the, the, the fever, the chest congestion, all of that other stuff. She, however, had pneumonia. Now, she also is a breast cancer survivor. So her immune system, of course, has been compromised as she had high doses of a very severe chemo. Um, but she, it took her over three months before she finally tested negative to the virus. Now she's healthy and well now, but we don't know what residual effects are going to happen to anyone who has had this virus. We, we don't know. All right, so some of us could be walking around with a little cough and we may have the virus, is that what you're saying? And you might not even know. But and some people, cool. and how can we get tested? Because I remember it not being available to us. Is it easier to get tested now? Not unless you're showing symptoms. So we still have limited tests. Um, so we have to save those for the people who are showing symptoms. So this is what I've done. Um, back in January, early February, I suspect that I had this, but I was never tested for it because at that time it wasn't supposed to be here. So I, now that they have the tighter uh the antibody testing it's a blood test it's just a simple quick blood test you can get it at you know all of our urgent cares are doing the test now if you suspect that you had the virus if you had symptoms that that give you cause to think you had the virus you can go and get this antibody test to see if in fact you in your blood, you're showing antibodies against the COVID virus. So I should know my results by Friday. Um, now I have been exposed to this virus on more than one occasion, very up close and personal. So um, I'm not, I haven't since that time, I haven't exhibited any symptoms. So that's really the reason why I'm going to be tested because I, I suspect that I may have already had it.